folks, so today we're going to do another short story from the Stuart McLean book. This story is called The Piano. I was seven years old the afternoon I had my first piano lesson. My teacher was a young man from Scotland. His name was Mr. McLaughlin. He wore tweed sport he wore tweed sports jackets and carried a soft leather briefcase and like the doctor and the breadman and the milkman back in those unhurried days of the mid 1950s he came to the house mr mclaughlin came once a week wednesday afternoons after school he and i would go to the basement past the furnace and into the playroom my father had finished with blue stained plywood and tiles there was a black blackboard on one wall and a pretty good train set and in the corner an old upright piano. The piano wasn't there for the early lessons at the beginning when Mr. McLaughlin taught. I practiced on a fold-out cardboard keyboard. Eventually the upright piano arrived and that, as you might imagine, was a big deal. Especially after the cardboard keyboard. I used cardboard keyboards back in the typing days when we were in high school and stuff and that was to like learn how to teach fast or how to type faster. It was kind of cool. <clears throat> okay. The piano in the basement was where Mr. McLaughlin and I did our work, or more to the point didn't. <laughs> Even back then when I was still in his single digits I was capable of disappointing and well aware of the disappointment I was causing Mr. McLaughlin. Despite my mother's encouragement, I never brought discipline or attention to my practices. The two things that were really the only requirements for forward motion, oh, I progressed, I wasn't hopeless, my right hand conquered, the treble cleft in a, boy, in a boyish way. But my, my left hand lumbered around the bass notes without any confidence. Like a dim cousin trying to find his way along a crowded street, always stopping to stare at the street signs myopically and falling behind everyone else. Now Mr. McLaughlin kept coming week after week, year after year, is beyond me. Oh how Mr. McLaughlin kept coming is beyond me. He must have he must have had a pupil somewhere who had who had made who made it worthwhile. Whoever it was, probably some studios girl. It certainly wasn't me. And so it was that my piano lessons eventually and thankfully ended. Mr. McLaughlin and I were put out of our pain. My brother took lessons too, and probably my sister. I don't remember about her, but we all stopped. The years slipped by, and somehow I ended up with with the piano, probably because I took guitar lessons at university, probably because I became a writer. I was the artsy one. I was also closest to the piano. My brother and sister lived on the other side of the country. The first place it went was in the living room of my first apartment. I remember how reunited I took, I took renewed interest in it. Sadly, my self-discipline and perseverance not to, my, not to mention my talent, hadn't developed over the years. Not surprisingly, neither had my playing. When I married the piano, when I married, the piano be, came with me into my new home, and when I had children of my own, they took the piano lessons too. I used to sit with them while they practiced, and sometimes we soared over it, and sometimes we fought over it, and when all was said and done, they had more success than I for sure but not much more success, not meaningfully more. They grew up and left home, and sadly I did too, and the piano came with me again. We have been through a lot together, this piano and I, a, a lot of years, if nothing else, close to half a century, and a, a year ago I, brought a new I bought a new house, and it was a modest place, and there is no room for a piano in my new house, unless I wanted to have a living room without a sofa or an office without a desk and I didn't I decided I didn't my problem is moving day approached was what to do about the piano selling it the reasonable thing to do seemed out of the question 
I couldn't bring myself to do it. I decided I would lend it to someone. They could have it until, well, until I needed it back. Where and when and why that might be, I had no idea. But when I did find someone who thought who thought they might be interested, I assured them it wouldn't be any time soon. They would think there, you would think that there would be lots of takers. There was only one, and they had it for about a year. Then one day the phone rang, and they said to me, we made a mistake. We want to give you your piano back. There's no room here either. And so I did the only thing I could think of doing. I arranged to have my piano placed in storage. And that is where it is today. Although as I say that, I realize I have no idea whatsoever exactly where that is. I haven't visited the piano or even asked about it. It is just away somewhere. It costs $50 a month to keep it there. I am assuming that because the people who are looking after it are in the business of doing this, storing pianos, <laughs> that they have given it a good home. And my 50 bucks is buying decent accommodations. I'm assuming that it isn't sitting in someone's backyard under a tarp, but that's an assumption. I don't know that. <laughs> I imagine to be, I imagine it to be an old warehouse, an old br brick walled factory dating back to the 1920s where they once manufactured electric fans or corn brooms, and today it is just a room where someone works on pianos. My piano and a few others like mine are lined up against the brick wall. I like to think that at night when the piano turn when the piano turners have gone home, the lone security guard has fallen asleep at his post, people appear to play these pianos. Men and women living in cramped apartment buildings who long to play but haven't the space or resources for a piano or maybe the spirits of all the players from the past who's, who find the temptation of one last concert too much to pass up as they sit and play the music I could I never could while the moonlight streaks through the warehouse windows uh, but the, that's just fantasy I know my piano is just sitting there under its storage blanket and that every month to pay, I pay to keep it there, it, oh sorry, I pay to keep it there is another month and it is unplayed. Uh, so that is what I, what I want to know. Why am I holding on to it? Why can't I say goodbye? Am I honoring memories here? My father, who is 90 years old now and built that room in the basement and got the piano down there? Not negligible things, Mr. McLaughlin. My boyhood, all those years, can I sell them? Can I give them away for nothing? Am I holding on to a road to the past? There are, I've noticed, fewer and fewer. Or is the road to the future? Or is it the road to the future? Do I think that one day one, one of my sons is going to show up like I did and say, where is that piano anyway? Do I think I have a hold on the past so I can pass it on to the future? So what if one if when they ask, I said, I sold the, that piano, would that really matter? Or are we talking about dreams here? Do I dis, do I do I in my disorganized and busy in my little imagination believe that one day I will call up the people at the warehouse and say, I want my piano back, bring it home. Am I stuck with my 50s, still dreaming that one day I will do away with the desk or the sofa, roll up my sleeves and sit down the way my mother and Mr. McLaughlin always wanted me to and apply myself to the mathematical mysteries of the key of C? Sorry, my cat. <laughs> Is this what happens to dreams? Do they all end up in brick warehouses and do people save 50 bucks a month and they, and they look at all and they look after all of them for you. It costs $50 a month to keep them free from rain or sleet or snow. Until the day you phone and say, I'm ready now, bring me my dream. <laughs> they, and they put it in a truck and they bring it to your house and they, as they carry it down the stairs to, your, to the room that you have made for it, especially your little dream, you think of yourself this time, I am going to practice every day this time it is going to work out. That's so cute. Dreams. We all have them, right? 
why don't you list me some of your dreams? I would love to hear some of the comments um, about this story and about this book. So feel free to leave me a comment, folks, and we'll see you again next time.